And finally, Mr Speaker, with reference to Prime Minister's questions yesterday, the first building on this site was built by King Canute, a Danish migrant. Westminster Hall was built by William Rufus, son of William the Conqueror. The clue is in the name. The royal family has blood from Aragon, Holland, uh, Hanover and Greece. The Ronda was built with the sweat of Irish and Italian migrants. Our Speaker is descended from Romanian Jews. The Lord Speaker's family hails from Portugal. The families of the Business Secretary and the Member for Tooting are from Pakistan. The Member for Richmond Park's father represented France in the European Parliament. The Corbyns were Norman French. The Graylings were probably French Huguenots. And God knows where the Bryants came from. <laughs> so can the Leader of the House confirm that we are all a bunch of migrants? Hello, um, thanks for your talk today. Um, I'd like to ask you about Europe, something that you're well known as for campaigning against the European Union and European integration um, in the past. Um, why, why do you think left-wing Euroscepticism is currently being out, overshadowed by sort of UKIP and Tory backbenchers? Um, what are your views on the referendum and would you support withdrawal? You catch that. Well, my view on Europe is very simple. We had this bloody war which cost millions of lives, and then we had to decide how we reacted to Europe. And I took the view that having fought them, we should now work with them and cooperate. And that was my first thought about it. Then when I saw how the European Union was developing, it was very obvious that what they had in mind was not democratic. I mean, in Britain, you vote for a government, and therefore the government has to listen to you and if you don't like it you can change it but in Europe all the key positions are appointed not elected the uh, Commission for example all appointed not one of them elected and the way that Europe has developed is that the bankers and the multinational corporations have got very powerful positions and if you come in on their terms they will tell you what you can and cannot do and that is unacceptable and my view about the European Union has always been not that I'm hostile to foreigners, but I'm in favour of democracy. And I think out of this story, we'll have to find an answer because I certainly don't want to live in hostility to the European Union, but I think they're building an empire there and they want us to be a part of that empire. And I, don't, I don't want that. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's my argument. The, the, the rationale for Europe today is not peace anymore, it's power. Thank you very much, Mr. Bloom, in one minute. Uh, well, Mr. President, uh, I'm uh, minded, actually, to quote the great American philosopher Murray Rothbard here, that the state, the state is an institution of theft writ large. Tax is just about a system where politicians and bureaucrats steal money from their citizens to squander in the most disgraceful manner. This place is no exception. Fascinatingly, and I really don't know how you manage to keep a straight face when you're talking about tax evasion, the whole commission and the commission bureaucracy avoid their taxes. You don't pay taxes like citizen pay taxes. You have all sorts of special deals. Composite tax rates, uh, high tax thresholds, non-contributory pension schemes. You are the biggest tax avoiders in Europe and here you sit pontificating. Well, the message is getting home to the people of the European Union. You're going to find that Eurosceptics are coming back in June in ever greater numbers. In ever greater numbers. And I can tell you worse, as the people get your number, it won't be long before they storm this chamber and they hang you and they'll be right. Eerie coincidence, the eerie similarities between Joe Cox's story and that of Anna Lind. And for those who don't know it, it is being reported even a little bit in the mainstream media that's just cocking an eyebrow and calling it weird that this coincidence is happening. But yes, just uh, 13 years ago in Sweden, basically the exact same thing happened. And we can get that from many different places. We'll get it here from Sputniknews.com. History repeating, Cox's death gets Swedes to remember Lind and Palm. 
Labour MP Joe Cox died after being shot and stabbed multiple times after a constituency meeting in West Yorkshire. The murder may become a turning point in the Brexit campaign and provide the UK vote on continued EU membership with an unexpected denouement. Remarkably, the Swedish vote on the euro in 2003 was tarnished by the murder of then Foreign Minister Anna Lind of the Social Democrat Party, which was carried out in a similar way and under similar circumstances. Anna Lind was stabbed to death on September 13, 2003, in the final stretch of the pro-euro campaign, preceding a referendum on joining the eurozone. I had planned another closing message, but I feel compelled to say what I'm about to say. Now, I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. The combining of national governments started with the European Union. That union started with trade agreements, then a common currency, the euro, and now a European parliament that is feverishly passing laws that uh, override the laws of, num of the member nations. A constitution was drafted but rejected by a few uh, of those nations, but never mind. They implemented it anyway. Now it's North America's turn. Building on the North American Free Trade Agreement, the NAFTA section of the Commerce Department is busy drafting laws and regulations for a North American Union a union of Canada, America, and Mexico. The president has attended secret meetings and signed at least two agreements under the Security and Prosperity Partnership Program. Information leaked out about the meetings, and now it is all in the open. No treaty has been signed, so Congress has not become involved. However, money from our Treasury is now being spent for this effort. We will have a new currency, the Amero, and a new constitution modeled on the Soviet Union's constitution. Our rights will not be inalienable, but they will be granted by government who can also take them away. One sign that this is our future is the plans for the superhighways from southern Mexico through America and into Canada. These plans are not secret any longer. Huge amounts of property will be taken in the name of free trade, peace and security. You will have a national ID card with a radio frequency chip in it. WikiLeaks is raising a 100,000 euro reward for Europe's most wanted secret, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. This is something enormous. It is about a final control and is it's the United States saying there may be another power in the world but we will be the ultimate power. The TTIP is the most important thing that is happening in Europe right now. It's a secretive deal being negotiated between Europe and the United States. Once signed, it will cement a key part of the US government's plan to create a new global bloc that will ensure the dominance of its largest companies. And to understand why, we need to go back to the 1950s. After the Second World War, the United States accounted for half of the world's economy. Its influence was unmatched by any country, and it was able to write the early rules of international trade to its advantage. The World Trade Organization was created in this context, and the US dictated rules that favored American business. But as economies like China and India joined the WTO, it became a more democratized arena, and the US found it harder to control its decision making. At the WTO, at its Doha rounds, uh, India spoke up and Brazil spoke up, and the US lost control. I think it's uh, no use uh, beating around the bush. Uh, this uh, meeting has uh, collapsed. The US felt it needed a new strategy to maintain its global dominance. So in the classical American style, they went big. To bypass the WTO, they're creating the biggest international agreements that the world has ever seen. They're called the three big T's. 
the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, and the Trade and Services Agreement, or TISA. And they're all being negotiated in secret right now. We only found out when WikiLeaks uh, was able to leak parts of them. And what's interesting is when you look across all of these deals, whether it be TTIP, TPP or TISA, China is excluded, but also Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, they're all excluded because those are the emerging economies. This is a call for an uprising. We welcome you to today's show. And as those of you who have not subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as we continue to expose the satanic Illuminati agenda and the ushering in of the Antichrist. Today's show, I want to talk about this quote-unquote Brexit, which is the UK filing for its independence as it leaves the European Union and as uh, other sources are talking now about all of these other nations are going to come forward and leave and be independent and be a sovereignty. And you're seeing various quote unquote truthers. You're seeing articles released by the hour here talking about how this is going to put a stop to the New World Order. Along with Donald Trump, the New World Order is getting their brains bashed in now, that it's all going to stop, that everything's going to change. Everybody is falling for this. It could not be further from the truth. The Bilderberg meetings occurred, what, two weeks ago? I talked about it on this channel. Other people reported on the Bilderberg meetings. We know that an economic collapse is imminent. Britain votes to leave the EU. Cameron plans to step down. Could there be, theoretically even, a more beautiful headline from the New York Times? And did anyone think they were going to be waking up to headlines like this today? I certainly didn't. I'm glad that it's here. Now, obviously, we have to be cautious. This is not the end of the road. This is only the beginning of a beginning. But let's just take a moment to bask in the moment and to thank our British brethren for making the right decision. And oddly, it wasn't stolen from under their nose this time. EU referendum results leave 52%, remain 48%. And yes, if you do want to bask in the moment, I suggest you follow the Brexit hashtag on Twitter where... <laughs> You can hear all the broken-hearted uh, globalists crying their tears over the, the European Union. Oh, what does this mean for the European project? Oh, it's just oh so terrible. It's, it's really quite beautiful <laughs> to see all of this. But, oh, I suppose, yes, let's not get too carried away. As I say, it's just the beginning of a beginning. It's going to be an interesting and lengthy process, and there's going to be all sorts of political maneuverings. It's not like globalism has just suddenly died. And there are many, many things that we should be thinking about, including something that I mentioned, of course, in the last edition of QFC, where I was talking about Brexit. For example, if the UK does leave Europe, then clearly that's going to have economic consequences, not just on Britain, but on Europe, that will theoretically could destabilize the, the global economy. Um, and the, the more importantly, the, the, the type of psychological mechanism that will be used either to prevent Britain from voting for Brexit because, hey, look what you guys are going to do to the world economy. Or if it happens and it actually does go through, then they could come around and say, look, you guys caused the death of the world economy. That's why we need more regional governments and globalism. Indeed. Well, uh, well said, James, because that's exactly, of course, what's happening today. Brexit infects global markets as unprecedented moves ac accumulate. The plant pound plunged by a record and the euro slid by the most since it was introduced. The FTSE 100 index plunged and S&B 500 index contracts and Asian stocks dropped by the most in 10 months. It's scary and I've never seen anything like it. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Because now the, the U people of the UK are not going to be governed from Brussels. Oh no. Oh, it's terrible. It's a travesty. Um, well, okay, first of all, let's put it in perspective. What's being lost here is paper, uh, notional, nominal uh, wealth uh, on the phony baloney stock market that generally is affecting global in invest uh, institutions and large cor uh, multinational corporations. So, I mean, that's the first order that we have to take this on. But to be fair, I mean, I'm sure that this uh, economic pain, should it continue, will filter down to uh, the average worker. So they're going to try to use that to again, again turn the screw and say you guys voted wrong let's do it again to write an introduction to a single chapter appearing in a book but the conditions are so unusual as to warrant it more than a year ago grace k Morey, the author of the article the great seal of the united states and its mystic significance prepared a sketch 
for a short primer of the Illuminati teachings. And in this sketch, as will be shown by the drawings, it was brought out that man is not only a threefold being, but that he is actually a fourfold being as well. In short, that when he has succeeded in reaching soul illumination, he is the completed pyramid or true triangle. If the student will give serious study to the article on the seal of the United States, he will find that on the reverse side of the seal, which is as yet uncut, there is to be found the pyramid, but with the capstone as yet not placed, and thus he will see that the philosophy of the Illuminati is the absolute and undeniable philosophy upon which these United States are founded, as is clearly indicated by our fourfold philosophy, by the drawings representing our philosophy, and by the drawings of the reverse side of the United States seal. And thus it would appear that the unseen hierarchies which shaped the foundation of the great republic which must some day rule the world are the same hierarchies which gave us the soul science philosophy as taught by the Illuminati. And now you know why what has happened in this country has happened and you now know why what is happening today is happening and you now know why on the reverse of the great seal of the United States are the words Novus Ordo Cyclorum, which literally translated means the new order of the ages, also known, ladies and gentlemen, as the new world order. But I won't let you rest with that shock. Listen to this, dear listeners. Hold on to your chairs, because the incredible admission that is coming to you right out of the pages of this book is going to knock you flat. Reading again from the book. And thus, it would appear that the unseen hierarchies which shape the foundation of the great republic which must someday rule the world are the same hierarchies which gave us the soul science philosophy as taught by the Illuminati. And now let us look into the future, not far, but just beyond the line. We find that scholars condemn the design of the reverse side of the United States seal, that it has never been cut but has remained hidden as though it were something to be ashamed of. However, though this appears the truth, it is not the truth. The reason why it has never been cut is because the time is not yet as the capstone has not yet been set. And what is this capstone? My reader, prepare for a shock. When Atlantis ruled the word, that which is now America was connected with Egypt by what is now Mexico, and in Mexico, in the territory of Yucatan, there is a pyramid in which the fire philosophers worshipped God as divine fire and life in like manner as did the initiates of Egypt, for the two were then one. America is not complete and will not be complete, cannot be complete until Mexico is again part of America as she was in the long ago. And when Mexico is once again a part of the United States, then will the capstone have been set on the pyramid and the reverse side of the United States seal will be cut. Thus you will see that the soul science primer with its drawings is but the beginning of the article concerning the seal of the United States, while the article on body, mind, spirit, and soul is the final thereof. May it not be long until the Holy Pyramid shall be completed, and may it be completed without the shedding of blood. Lovingly given, R. Swineberg Clymer, Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, July 6th, 1916. And now you know the final truth, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know the purpose of the free trade agreements. Now you know the purpose of GATT 
and NAFTA. Now you know where we're headed. Now you know that the middle class in this country is doomed. Now you know that the New World Order is being brought about by the intelligence community and the secret societies whose headquarters are in the United States of America, just 13 blocks from the White House. Now you know in the incredible admissions in their own writing in this book published by the ancient order of the Rose and Cross. Now you know that the Illuminati is real, that Freemasonry is a part of the Illuminati, that the Rose and Cross is a part of the Illuminati, that they are also called the Order, the Brotherhood, that they also consist of the Knights Templars, they also consist of the Knights of Malta and all of the other secret societies whose organizational structure is in the shape of a pyramid with a few at the top who really know what the great work and the great plan is and a whole bunch of slathering idiots thirsting after the secrets on the bottom who will never, ever know anything. Are the cockroaches scattering? If this broadcast doesn't do it, nothing will. If this doesn't wake you up, ladies and gentlemen, nothing will. If you don't understand now the 18 hours of the series that I've aired on the Mystery Schools, you will never understand it now or in the future. If you don't know where we're headed now, then you never will. If you are not concerned now, then you have already placed the chains upon your ankles and you have already watched freedom fly. If this broadcast does not do it, nothing will. This is the last voice of freedom. This is the only revelatory media source in the world today. The hour of the time is the only outlet for truth left upon this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have heard tonight is the final parting of the curtain. It is the opening of the last door that was to be opened. It is the final understanding of where we have been, where we are at, and where we are going. It is the light. It is the illumination in the darkest corners. You are looking at the forbidden fruit. You have heard tonight what you were never to hear, what has been forbidden for thousands of years. You now know what the great work is. You now know who is bringing it about. You, too, can find this book if you search hard enough in the incredible admissions that are contained within it. will give you the ammunition and the armor to march out here on the battlefield with me and many others who are trying to stop what is coming. Remember what Mr. Swineburne said at the end of his article. And I'll read that to you again. May it not be long until the Holy Pyramid shall be completed, and may it be completed without the shedding of blood. Lovingly given, R. Swineburne Climber, Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, July 6th, 1916. And I am telling you now, their goal is to destroy all other religions, save theirs, destroy all existing nation states, save theirs, and shackle the mob. And that is you. Good night, dear listeners, and God bless you all.